a good telescope has the power to do this. I saw Jupiter and one of the moons passing across it. And that was for me, I was just like, right, this is amazing. It'll turn you into a nerd. No party in tonight. A crappy scope, however, has the power to do this. It'll make you hate astronomy, turn your back on nerds, then you'll get a social life, then you'll go to parties, and you'll start dancing to the drum and bass. Clearly, clearly this is this really is bad. bad. Now, most people end up buying one of these cheap crappy scopes because they appear at the top of the Google search list. And that's why so many people who you'd think would be nerds are actually into drum and bass. But I believe that out there somewhere is a great scope that's as cheap as one of these crap ones. And uh, yeah, in this video, we're gonna try and find it. In fact, last year, I thought I had found it. Mm. I went up on the roof of the roof to test out an old school F5 80 millimeter achromatic refractor. It's absolutely crystal clear. Look at that. It was fantastic on the moon, astonishing on the planets, good on deep space. Ah, there it is. And can even be used for astrophotography. Last night, this little baby managed to take this shot. The good news is a number of companies stock this classic 40 year old design. The bad news is, when my last video dropped, it sold out. This year, it's back, but the manufacturers have bumped up the price and now it costs £125. And because most folks won't spend more than £100 on their first scope, this beauty is now out of reach of thousands of potential nerds. So, Bunny, if we can't find a good scope for under 100 squiddles to replace this one, then the world is going to run out of nerds. And why is that bad? Because without nerds, Benny, the human race is doomed. Uh, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. I'm afraid not. Yes, it is. Now, listen. The oh! So in this video, we're going to try and save the world by finding a great telescope for under a hundred pounds. And guess what? I've only gone and found it. <laughs> this. This is something I've been wanting to try out for ages. The first scope by Celestron. It's like 56 quid. That is crazy cheap. And yet, it's got the best mount of any cheap scope out there. Ooh, it's really smooth, really nice. These eyepieces are old school eyepieces and cheap. But I wonder, I wonder, are they gonna do the job? Well, we're going to find out because this little beauty is doing battle with your standard Google recommended scope. This is like one of the most popular scopes ever, ever to land on Amazon. The Celestron Travel Scope. Yeah, I don't expect this to be that good. I'll say one thing for it. It does come with a whole lot of bits. Uh, yeah. Ooh, maybe it's gonna be okay. Maybe it's gonna be okay. It's, it's better than I was expecting, that's sure. Okay. This is it, folks. The first scope, the 70 millimeter travel scope, my classic Acro, and Jupiter. Let's try this one, shall we? Immediately, I spot a problem with the Celestron 70mm travel scope. It's got the wobbles. When you knock a good mount, okay, it's one, two, it'll take three, about five seconds four, for the wobbles five, to die down. Six, seven, eight, nine. It's still wobbling around a bit. I mean, yeah, let's pop it on the other tripod. That's better. The secret of observing planets is to be patient and wait for a moment of atmospheric calm. And on the right, you'll see the classic Acro delivers compelling bands across Jupiter, but the travel scope doesn't. Yeah, it's just not quite 
it's just not quite getting sharp. It's just all slightly blurry. Come on, little Celestron first scope. Don't let me down. The reason I think this little fella oh. is gonna save the Earth is because it incorporates the inventions of two telescoping genii. The first was Sir Isaac Newton, who 200 years ago realized that mirrors can do a better job than lenses. And more recently, American monk John Dobson, who was so determined to show people God's heavenly creation, he invented a super stable cheap mount called the Dob on which to put Newton's telescope. And I'm banking that this cute little mini Dob is going to turn you into a believer. How disappointing. The Celestron first scope is in fact worse than the travel scope. Something has gone horribly wrong. Well, it looks like the world will run out of nerds. <sighs> Such a shame. Nothing else for it. I'm going to have to alert the high nerd. Her response was swift. Within hours, first light optics sent a flotilla of cheap scopes to biscuit mansions in the hopes of finding one that was as good as my beloved old Acro. Inside the first box was a Skywatcher 76mm Heritage. It's not as popular as the first scope because it's 20 quid more expensive. It looks identical, doesn't it? But, as I discovered, it's not identical. This mirror here is parabolic shape. This mirror in here is spherical. That's a shaving mirror. That's a telescope mirror. Could the lack of a parabolic mirror be the reason why the first scope performs so badly? And if so, how much better is this next scope gonna be? What about this baby, huh? <laughs> it is the clone of this 76 millimeter fat sky watcher. It's a 100 millimeter fat sky watcher. Now then, it turns out exactly the same scope with a different label on it costs $99 in the States, which means this baby, this baby might be the one actually not in the UK though, but in America, ooh, very exciting. The next box reveals the oldest telescope design of them all, the long thin refractor. Now I've got one of these made in the 1980s in Japan by Vixen. It's absolutely blooming brilliant. The question is, can modern China match the quality of those old Japanese scopes? Here's a new one. Skywatcher 70mm F10. Ooh. Annoyingly, this scope now costs more than 100 quid, so it's disqualified. Luckily, I haven't opened up this one. <laughs> we got a similar long thin one that's only 75. A Celestron 60mm. This one is potentially going to match my old Vixen. I doubt it though, the Vixen is amazing. Anyway, let's find out, let's get it up there. Clouds are, clouds are okay. All right. Let's kick off with the mini dob. Let's find out how this parabolic mirror does. The moon's not bad. Let's move on to Jupiter. Although you can see the four moons, it just, well, it's just not good enough. On Jupiter, these two are just too tidge. To do the king of the planets justice, we need a bigger parabolic mirror, like this one. Now, Grant from First Light Optics says this is better my lovely acro that I love. 
Let's find out. Unfortunately, bud, I disagree. That means the entire hopes of the whole of the human race rest upon this final telescope, the Celestron 60mm Refractor. Biscuit, no one believes that the entire success of the human race depends on the new... This is crunch time now. Physics says that the thinner your telescope, the less resolution it's capable of achieving. And this is the thinnest scope on the roof tonight. Tripod's bad. The tripod is bad. There is a fix for this, which I mentioned on my website. For now, we're just gonna pop the scope on my own tripod. Okay, that's better. Better with this tripod, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Holy kamooly. You know, when you see something that weighs more than 300 times what the Earth does, just floating in a sea of blackness more than 420 million miles away, well, the chances are you're going to get turned into a nerd. Oh, it's just so sharp, it's gorgeous. If you look carefully in a moment of calm, you can see a spot on Jupiter. That, my friends, is the shadow of Europa. Oh. <laughs> the red spot is currently on the other side of the planet. This Celestron 60mm F10 is my recommendation. It's 75 quid. Bunny, we actually did manage to save the planet. You do realise it's rabbit droppings that will save the planet? Well, you can think what you think. I know what I know. And I've put everything I know on my website. Now, if my plan has worked, and you are buying one of these scopes, and you are on your way to becoming a nerd, then presumably you've got some noob astro questions that need answering. Well, you're in luck, because Biscuit fans have set up a super friendly amateur astronomy community on the Astro Biscuit Discord server. We've got 8,000 members with the biggest astro server there is, and 500 of our members are registered nerds. We've even got more than 60 who've achieved the height of mega nerd. Anyway, all those guys and girls will answer your questions. You don't even have to join Discord because on my website, we've got a Ask a Nerd page and you can type in your questions there and fingers crossed, someone will be answering straight away. And a huge thank you to the mods and bat mods and mega nerds who are helping make this community work so well. The only reason it works is because us nerds basically are nice. Nerds are nice, right? And uh, a bunch of us are willing to help other people out. It's supersonic. So thank you everyone. I'm actually not going anywhere because I've got to say my thank yous. Firstly, Thanks Richtenstein, awesome tunes, his album link is below. Thank you to my patrons, patrons by the way get access to a special group of hidden channels on the Discord server which is where all the best biscuits on the whole server hang out including all the mega nerds. I'm not thanking all the people who helped me buy this amazing camera because I'll be thanking you in the next video when hopefully, if the weather clears, I'll actually use it. Huge thank you to everyone who buys their astronomy equipment using links on my website. The links should be the cheapest you can get. And I also explain the astrophotography theory behind what I've chosen. And we know it's the best stuff because we've tested over 300 scopes on the Discord server. And last but not least, 
the Big Amateur Telescope, the project where we all point our telescopes at the same target and share data, look up my website to find out more, is expanding. We are now also doing wide field, so if you've got a small scope you can join, and solar, because the sun's really kicking off at the moment. Uh, uh, Helena, thank you for dancing, and hopefully we'll see you and some other YouTube astro celebrities in a live event called Astrophotographer's Question Time, which will be coming at you on the 27th November, 9pm, live from the Discord server, streaming on this YouTube channel. So, subscribe, listen in, and join us and ask your questions. Doodle pip. <laughs>